Okay, so this is part two of this problem. We're actually going to start solving it in, in this video. The last video, though, I, I highly recommend that you go watch it because hopefully, anyways, it will give you an idea of, of related rates, how something could be moving faster at one end uh, of a beam than the other, so to speak. Um, it's really, really interesting, if nothing else. Okay, so we want to find the variable rotate. Ro uh, rate of rotation of this laser if the, ro the rate at which this beam moves across the floor is to remain constant. So how can we do that? Well, we can label this x, the distance, so let me, let me actually do it up here so it's, it's very clear. Let's label this distance here x. Or really any, any distance. We just pick any x. So here, you know, here's a different x. So we're just going to pick some arbitrary x. Let's, let me put it that way. And we know that, that that x is related to theta through the tangent function. Let me show you what I mean. If I draw this down to our arbitrary x, I still have a right triangle and and here is my theta, theta and tangent is opposite over adjacent. And we know what the adjacent is. The height of this camera is 50 feet off the ground. That's the adjacent side. So let me show you what I'm talking about. The tangent of the angle theta is equal to x over 50. It's equal to x over 50, because no matter what x you pick, you're going to have this opposite side, which is just x. So for any arbitrary x, the opposite side is going to be x, and the height is going to be 50. So tangent of theta is x over 50. Okay, now to find the, the rate of rotation, that's going to be d theta dt. And then we already know that the rate at which the beam moves across the floor, dx dt, is going to be constant. So all we got to do is, is take the derivative. So I hope you're still with me. So we're just taking the derivative of this, both sides. And the derivative of tangent is secant squared theta. But we're taking it with respect to time. So we have to remember to tack on d theta dt. It's very important. Go and watch the implicit differentiation videos and the chain rule videos to understand why we have to do that if you don't understand that. OK, and then the derivative of the other side is just going to be 1 over 50 dx dt. Okay, and and now we can can plug in dx dt. We know is going to be two feet per second. The rate at which that beam moves across the floor is going to be constant at two feet per second. So let's let's deal with that. So this will be secant squared theta d theta dt is equal to one over fifty times two which is 2 over 50, which is 1 over 25. OK, and then let's just keep going here. So let's solve for d theta dt. That's what we wanted to know. d theta dt is equal to 1 over 25 times 1 over secant squared. We divided both sides by secant squared, which is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. But 1 over secant squared is just cosine. So this simplifies to cosine squared of theta over 25. So d theta dt, the variable rate of rotation, this is, is modeled by cosine squared theta over 25. And what does this all mean? What does it actually mean? Well, this means that the rate at which the, 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 the camera must rotate depends on where this angle is, what the actual angle is. So for every angle you can, you can pick, it's going to have to rotate at a different speed to keep the, the speed at which this beam moves across the floor constant. So it's constantly, there's going to have to be some sort of program or software 
that that knows what the angle is and knows exactly how fast it should be moving. So for any angle you pick, you can figure out the rate at which theta should be moving. Okay, or the rate at which the camera should be rotating, if you want to think about it like that. All right, so, so that's that. Um, but there is one more consideration, and that's we have to actually restrict the domain of this. We're dealing with a real, uh, a real scenario here, and theta can't be any angle. Clearly, theta can't be 180, because if we're measuring... Uh, let me try and clean this up first before I explain this. If this is theta here, well, let me do a better job cleaning up. So forget that x for now. OK. So if this is theta here, we're measuring from the y-axis this way. So theta can't be 180 degrees. We don't want, to, we don't want the security beam to rotate all the way around and, and hit the ceiling. We only want it to rotate up to this corner point in the floor. So what is that? How far is that? Well, this whole distance is half of 100, right? It's 50. So the tangent of theta, tangent of theta must equal 50 over 50. That's the, that's the most that theta can ever be. And we can solve this with arctan, but we really don't need to because we should realize that when the tangent is equal to 1, theta must equal 45 degrees. Or, if you'd like, pi over 4 radians. I like radians better. But 45 degrees is, is maybe more intuitively easy to understand because that's what we grew up with. So theta at most can be 45 degrees, and at least it can be negative 45. Because if we go the other way, if we go the other way, we're just measuring counterclockwise, you can think of it like. If, if you rotate your head around, you'll see that, or, or not counterclockwise, clockwise. This would be counterclockwise and this would be clockwise. So we're measuring in the opposite direction, which means this is going to be negative theta. But it's still going to be the tangent, or it's still going to be the same thing. It's going to be f the tangent of negative theta is, is 50 over 50. So theta, the least it can be, so it has to be, theta has to be less than or equal to 45, and it has to be greater than or equal to negative 45. So our, our domain restriction, I think you'll see, see it easier, is negative 45 degrees is less than or equal to theta, which is less than or equal to 45 degrees. And after that domain restriction, now our problem is done. Theta is, is going to be going, uh, it, it, we, we force theta to stop at this corner and, and move back, and stop at that corner and move back with this domain restriction. Okay, so that's that. A uh, pretty interesting problem if you ask me, and it's actually, it wasn't too difficult. It wasn't too difficult to figure out. Okay, in the next problem we'll look at a man walking with his shadow. Okay, see you then.